And then you hear what we said earlier when Boog Shiabi joined us. I wonder, there might be a little concern there from Bumgarner coming into the game tonight. I know he got a little testy with the media, but that's okay. That's okay. We like that. Uh, San Diego State plays UNLV this weekend. It's going to be at 5 o'clock. It's going to be on the Time Warner cable channel, which some people have, some people don't. How you get it exactly, I'm not clear. But San Diego State is coming off the most impressive win, in my opinion, as we just discussed, during Rocky Long's tenure as the Aztec head coach, 39-38 on the road at Nevada. A game that even a lot of very, very optimistic San Diego State fans probably thought they were going to lose on the road against a team which had lost but once in conference. And now we go out to the Western Exterminator Hotline. He's the athletic director at San Diego State. His team is coming off a huge win. His basketball program is going to be ranked in the top, what, 15, top 20. Women's basketball, women's soccer. Got a lot of good things going on, Jim Sterk. We uh, appreciate a couple minutes of your time. Thank you very much. Hey, Darren, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I went back and saw some of these highlights from the game because, uh, as you know, I'm sure you've been prepped on this. I was out of the country. You guys had a, a heck of a section there. It seemed like a lot of Aztec fans made the trip. Yeah, there were, and um, some Northern California Aztecs made it up there as well. So uh, so not not only people from San Diego, but people from uh, – from uh, up up north and had a good crowd and and just a you know a great great game you know I heard you talking about where it stood in the in the standings of great games but Tom Abels who has been uh, we recognized him last year he had over 700 games and or two years ago I think it was he's up to 720 plus uh, he said it was the best ever and uh, Leon Parma a former quarterback from uh, I think 48 or so he he said it was as well so. Uh, it ranked up there, that's for sure. Now, what are we talking about? The best regular season game, the best road game, the best game in the I, history of San they, Diego State? They said the best in the history, that, that it was the best in the history, just best uh, finish and how it was won <laughs> and all the all the conditions of it, you know, the our number one quarterback going out and second string quarterback coming in and, and how it was won. It, that's that's what they said. Okay. Well, uh, listen, I, I don't know how you measure that. And I have respectfully, I, 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 would, I, I was having a conversation with your outstanding sports information director, Mike May, earlier today. And we were talking about this very topic. I, I don't know that you could definitively say it one way or the other. But certainly, Jim, I would think yeah. the most of impressive wins that you've seen here as athletic director at State. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's, it, it puts us five and three. We have four games left. We need to win one more to be bowl eligible out of those four, and two wins to to you know have a great shot at at staying home and maybe playing BYU in the Poinsettia Bowl. That would be great. Um, so, but but as you know, Rocky's focused on uh, U, UNLV, and and we've got a, a tough matchup this weekend. We're talking with Jim Stark, athletic director at San Diego State. What was it like for you? What was going through your mind when he lines up and goes for two in overtime? Well, you know, I, I thought. The momentum was in our, our favor, and, and you know what? It's probably the right thing to do, but all, all I could think about was the firestorm if, if we didn't make it, you know, that how, how am I going to protect him if, because it was the right decision, uh, you know, with all the second guessers that would, would have uh, come out of the woodwork. So, you know, I was, uh, I was ecstatic, obviously. Well, you know what the thing about it, though, is because we had this conversation earlier that, that the decision to go for two after every touchdown was debatable. So I went back through the box score through the game log. He didn't do that after every touchdown. So, so it was exclusively a decision. He did it a couple times in the game, but it's not like that had been what he had done after every touchdown. So it stood out that it was truly a decision based on the moment. I thought it took a lot of guts to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you could see the, you know, the smirk on his face. And, uh, you know, when, if you're looking at the replay, which I did, uh, watch it again. And, and uh, he, he had, you know, a confident look. He knew what he was doing. And, and I, he, as he said, you know, they, they took six or seven plays to score in overtime, kick the, kick the extra point. We score in two after we had taken the ball in, in the last 50 seconds and drive the length of the field for the, you know, the tying field goal. So, so the, the momentum, he said, it, I was crazy if I didn't do it, is what, where Rocky was. So, um, you know, more power to him, and it was a great win. And obviously the kids had confidence. And I, I think, you know, the mentality, the toughness, uh, the ability to go for two when we need to. Um, he set that tone early on in the season, and it paid off in this game. We're talking with Jim Stark, athletic director at San Diego State, who is still not on Twitter, correct? Correct. Okay. Well, maybe someday. Well, maybe someday Marty will talk you into it, but I doubt it. What do you think is um, 
as an athletic director, because a lot of people complain about this rule in the NFL, the rule of icing the kickers. Do, do you like it? Do you like that the coaches have that ability to do so? Do you believe in that? Should it stand? Should it go away? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, if co- coaches want to do it, I, I think a lot of kickers like it, that they, uh, you know, they know it's coming now. It's not a unique type of thing, so they – they get a chance to, uh, you know, to kick it. And I don't know if you knew, but he, he missed the first one right. when they called timeout. And so it, it gave him a chance to, you know, to go out and make corrections and then, and then kick, the, kick, the tying, kick the tying field goal. So, so it worked out for us. And I, so I, I'm not sure it's, it's a good thing, and I think you'll see more coaches not doing it as opposed to doing it. So, you, so one way or the other, as the athletic director, though, you don't have a strong feeling because it seems like every time it happens in the NFL, a bunch of people yell and scream and complain about it, and you hear the belly aching all the time when, when coaches do it. Yeah, it's just a part of the game. You know, it makes it, makes it fun and, uh, you know, part of the strategy that you, you have going in. All right, now you guys play UNLV. You're at home this weekend. The game's at 5 o'clock. Uh, people can, I'm sure, go to your website. Where can they go to find tickets for this? Yeah, goaztex.com or, or at, at Qualcomm. Uh, the ticket office is there and, and, and marked. And so it, it's a great game. I mean, we UNLV doesn't have a great record, but they've beaten Air Force. Uh, they led Nevada by 14 at one point. Um, they're, they've been tied or close to it each of, the, each, of their, each of their games in the third quarter. And so it's, uh, we were behind – Last year, fourteen to seven at halftime by the, this group. So we've got our work cut out, and hopefully the kids, you know, focus on that one. And then it sets up a great one uh, down in Bo- over in Boise. So, um, so I, I hope people come out, and it should be a great collegiate game. And you guys could become bowl eligible this week with the win. It would get you to number six. Um, so that's a big deal. Now, where would this game be on television? Because you guys are going to be back on the Time Warner cable thing, right? Time Warner cable thing, yeah. It, it's uh, Northern County. It's a, on Time Warner, the, the, the Time Warner Sports Channel. Now, do you get that where I live in North Park for Cox Communication subscribers? No. Is there anything in the works to try to make this game available for Cox Communication subscribers? We, um you know, they that was something out of our hands. Uh, the Mountain West Conference did and negotiated with uh, Time Warner, uh, CBS, and and worked with Time Warner to have it. And it, and it's all part of the, you know, the whole battleground of San Diego with, uh, you know, with the the cable networks with Fox, with Cox, with Time Warner, and it was a strategy by Time Warner because they have the Lakers channel to pick up our football games and, and some of our basketball games and uh, to put pressure on, on Cox and others to put it on. Okay. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Or like it, you said, people can go to the game itself. Yeah, absolutely. The best, best is go to the game. And then uh, next year we do have a, uh, we're in a different league and, and shouldn't have a problem. Yeah. How are the TV rights going for that? You got a lot of people now playing guess where the big East television rights are going to be. Do you have a, who, who do you think is the favorite right now for the big East TV? Well, I, I think, uh, ESPN and and one of their senior VPs told me early on when we were even just talking about going in the league that you know they they seriously want the property and and it's just whether or not they'll let it go in out of the exclusive period and and that's coming to an end here at the end of the month so ESPN has that opportunity and then uh, the league can go out and and negotiate with others and see what you know what the best bid is and then ESPN has an opportunity to come back at it so uh so we'll see i, I am i i would uh, i would guess that it's probably going to be a combination maybe uh of an ESPN Fox ESPN um uh, you know maybe NBC but uh we'll we'll see but i think it's it's very positive uh the league itself uh last week was the fourth ranked power league in the in the out of all the conferences this week it's fifth uh ahead of the acc last week it was ahead of the big big 10 so um had three undefeated teams three teams in the in the top 25 plus boise so uh, we're moving into a a tough tough conference and uh, you know we need to be prepared for it and it'll it'll be a great uh competitive battleground for us next year now last time you were on the show you you dropped it on (laughs) us about alabama we made a little bit of news with that one uh i'm also reading and let me give proper credit here because i read it through the union tribune that you guys are are in discussions to perhaps play at ohio state is there any truth into that 
we're, there's uh, discussions going on. I, you know, I, I joked uh, with Mike May that I was going to tell you we were playing the Green Bay Packers. And you, were gonna, <laughs> you were going to uh, bust that story on uh, out there, so uh, I can uh, I can get a bunch of calls on that. But no, you know, <laughs> as I told you when when we were talking about it, you know, things come and go, and but this, um, you know, we've been working and looking at our schedule for a long time since I, I, you, I was on last time with you and, and Alabama came out. And I gave that as an example of somebody that, you know, could, we could possibly play. Um, you know, Ohio State could have been at that time, you know, somebody that we could possibly play. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of fluid. We're working on it and uh, it's not all done yet. So we'll see. Okay, but it, it's still at least the ball is still in the air. You're still oh, at least thinking about it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and you'd rather obviously play Ohio State than Alabama. So you think Ohio State's ripe for the pick of next year. <laughs> yeah, they're only 8-0, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's there to worry about? But the Big Ten stinks. Come on, yeah, we all know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last thing before we let you go. I mentioned you know, how good you guys are expected to be in hoops. You know, women's hoop is, is getting some accolades, from what I understand, Women's soccer is ranked very high as well. Football, one win away from bowl eligibility for the third straight year. It's, it's a good time to be the athletic director at San Diego State. Do you think that success is transferable from sport to sport up there on the Mesa? You know, it, it, it does really help. And, and football is the big one, you know, where it, it kind of sets the tone. But I'll tell you what, our, our women's soccer team is, you know, they're ranked sixth nationally right now. They're 16-1-1. One one. Uh, we've already clinched the Mountain West title we host the mountain west championships next week uh, we get a bye so we, do, we don't play till november 2nd on the friday night at seven and then if we continue to win we could host uh in the ncas and then uh you know the ultimate goal is usd's hosting the national title so we could stay in san diego and win a national title in women's soccer so uh, that's that's the ultimate goal but but a lot of uh, a lot of balls to be put in the goal before that happens but it but it's very very exciting and and you mentioned men's and women's basketball both of them are picked they both have four out of five starters returning with impact players that didn't play last year that are new to the team so they're we're, we're sitting very very well and the teams are doing doing great well good hopefully you put your feet up on the desk there it sounds like you're doing a great job as the athletic director when you have so much success through all these different sports and they all seem to like each other too i know tony bland has taken to twitter a bunch of times not that you follow but he's taken to twitter a bunch of times to promote your women's soccer team and i think women's soccer is never going to be a huge draw here well I mean, let's be honest but I think it's great that you have somebody like Tony Bland who will take to Twitter to promote a product up there on the Mesa and show some pride there in the program. Yeah, our coaches are, you know, I'm blessed with a great group of coaches and staff that I work with, and, and they in turn, you know, attract great kids. And, and these teams are very competitive. They're doing great. They're, they're winning in the classroom and, and on, on their field of play. And so it's exciting to be a part of that. Jim, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for the time. All right. Thanks, Darren. You got it. Jim Sterk, Athletic Director.